Hello and a very good evening. You're watching the news tonight on Rajya Sabha Television with me, Frank Pereira. Here are the headlines. Madras High Court seeks report on missing MLAs in Tamil Nadu. Caretaker Chief Minister Panir Selvam's faction alleges that some MLAs are being kept in forced captivity. Shashikala loyalist dismissed allegation. Three-day National Women's Parliament on Empowering Women and Strengthening Democracy starts. Union Minister Venkaya Naidu asked parties to back legislation on 33% reservation for women in Parliament and state legislatures. Setback for Donald Trump's travel ban order. U.S. Appeals Court refuses uh, to block lower court ruling, says government has not proved any terror threat to justify the ban. Records tumble as India pile on 687 for the loss of six wickets against Bangladesh. Virat Kohli surpasses Don Bradman to become the first batsman in Test cricket to score double centuries in four Test series in a row. Well, rival camps made competing claims in Tamil Nadu on Friday, even as the Madras High Court expressed concerns over reports that AIADMK MLAs were being held hostage by Party General Secretary VK Shashikala and her aides. Reports say that Governor Vidya Sagar Rao has sought reports from the police on the matter. While many MLAs from the Shashikala camp asserted that they aren't staying against their consent, Chief Minister Panir Selvam's faction claimed that the police refused to mark their complaint. The AIADMK faction, led by V.S. Sasikala on Friday, suspended E. Madhusudhanan from the primary membership of the party. A prominent party leader, Madhusudhanan, had on Thursday announced his decision to back Paneer Silvam as the chief minister. He is not elected by the panel, as to the rule of the MGR. MGR is same rule. As the rules of the MGA, party cadets can only select the general secretary. In another latest twist to the political saga, the Pani Silvam led government hit back. It told the Madras High Court it was incorrect to say that EIADMK MLAs who were reportedly supporting Party General Secretary VK Sasikala for the Chief Minister's post were not illegally confined. In response, the court took note of the allegations that at least 20 MLAs were refusing to take food and water because they were being held in confinement. Paneer Sarvam didn't give any list of MPs, MLAs of support. He didn't stake any claim. He only wants his resignation to be withdrawn, but that has already been accepted. And he has functioned as a caretaker thing. How can you, it's like putting uh, toothpaste back into the toothpaste. <laughs> With several petitions filed and questions being raised about them, the MLAs met the media outside the resort where they were staying in Chennai. Stating that they were not birds in a cage, they denied being held hostage. <laughs> Meanwhile, the Supreme Court also refused to give an urgent hearing on a PIL seeking to restrain Sasikala from being sworn in as the Tamil Nadu Chief Minister. It said the hearing will be held in due course after it decides the disproportionate assets case against her within a week. The petition said a law and order situation could develop if Sasikala is indicted after becoming the Chief Minister. To hear the plea because Sasikala is not a member of the Legislative Assembly, her appointment as a Chief Minister would be unconstitutional. Not only that, uh, Sasikala um, convicted in a disproportionate asset case along with Jailalitha, so the against which the Supreme Court has to deliver the judgment. So until the Supreme Court delivers judgment in that uh, case, uh, our appointment would be uh, illegal. In a major blow to Sasikala, however, the Congress also refused to support the AIADMK General Secretary in her attempt to become the Tamil Nadu Chief Minister. This was after the state BJP said on Thursday that it will support Paneer Silvam's continuation as the Chief Minister of the state. Bureau Report, Rajya Sabha TV.
Well, a first of its kind conclave, the National Women's Parliament organized by the Andhra Pradesh Legislative Assembly began on Friday. The vision of this conclave is to encourage social, political and economic empowerment of women. Speaking at the inaugural session, Union Minister Venkaya Naidu said that the ruling party would pass the Women's Reservation Bill once it has a majority in the Rajya Sabha. The three-day National Women's Parliament organized by the Andhra Pradesh Legislative Assembly began in Amravati on Friday with the theme Empowering Women and Strengthening Democracy. Addressing the gathering, Union Minister Venkaya Naidu said the legislation providing 33% reservation for women in Parliament and state legislatures would see the light of day after the NDA secures majority in the upper house. Naidu also urged political parties to show conviction in this regard. What is required is political will and administrative skill. That is the requirement of the hour. And once I can assure you, on behalf of my party, if once I get majority in Rajya Sabha, the Women's Reservation Bill will be passed at the earliest. Tibetan spiritual leader Dalai Lama also pitched for empowerment of women to build stronger nations. About 200 nations of this planet, the majority of the nation's leaders eventually take by female or world may become more safer, more peaceful. Several speakers at the event underscored the need to educate women to achieve internationally agreed goals for development and sustainability. The event also witnessed the participation of international women dignitaries. So why should women not take responsibility for ensuring right kind of education for boys and girls? That means re-education of their own as mothers. Their mother at home and their teacher outside the home. So I think the it's the onus is a lot on the woman, how she grooms the boys, how she grooms the girls. Women empowerment is an essential precondition of inclusive, equitable, participatory and sustainable democracy and development. A robust democracy must create opportunity for inclusion of women in every sector. The conclave will come out with the Amravati Declaration on Women Empowerment at the end of the three-day deliberations. There will be declaration after this. The declaration will be circulated all policy makers, either government of India or state governments or some other private organizations, everybody. Then naturally there will be some takers. There would be seven plenary sessions at the event with discussions on subjects like socio-political challenges in women empowerment, women's status and decision making, building own identity and vision for the future. India is ranked 87th out of 144 countries in global gender gap. In world's largest democracy, women hold only 12% seats in the upper and lower houses of parliament. And National Women's Parliament is an attempt to provide platform for deliberations and encourage social, economic and political empowerment of women. Reporting from Amravati, with camera persons Prashanta and Sudhanshu, I'm Kriti Mishra for Rajya Sabha Television. Well, let's now get you the latest from the ongoing Assembly elections in Verdict 2017. The first phase of Uttar Pradesh elections will be held tomorrow. 73 constituencies spread over 15 districts will be voting to elect leaders from four main contenders, the Samajwadi Party Congress Alliance, the BJP, BSP and Rashtriya Lok Dal. The first phase is expected to see a nail-biting finish with all parties trying to woo Muslim votes in the districts including Riot Card, Muzaffar Nagar and Shamli. BJP has yet again fielded Muzaffar Nagar Riot accused MLA Sangeet Singh Som and Suresh Rana on Sardana and uh, Thana Bhavan seats. Phase 1 will also decide the fate of around 25 VIP seats in the region. These include Noida, where Pankaj Singh, son of Union Home Minister Rajnath Singh, and Atroli, where Sandeep Singh, grandson of former UP Chief Minister Kalyan Singh, would be vying for their maiden entry into the UP Assembly. Another high-profile contest will be on the Mathura seat, where three-time incumbent Congress MLA Pradeep Mathur has been challenged by the BJP national spokesperson Srikant Sharma. In the 2012 assembly election, SP and BSP had backed 24 seats each and the BJP had 11 out of the 73. The region is also a stronghold of the Rashtriya Lok Dal, which had backed 9 seats and the Congress only 5. हमने अपने इलेक्शन ऑफिशल्स को ये निर्देश भी दे दिए हैं कि वो हमारे आचार संहिता का अनुपालन और उसका कार्यान्वयन बिना किसी भेदभाव के 
बिना किसी पॉलिटिकल पार्टी में डिस्क्रिमिनेट किए हुए उसका इम्प्लीमेंटेशन सुनिश्चित करें क्योंकि कैराना फेज वन में स्थित है हमने वहां के इलेक्शन से संबंधित जिला मजिस्ट्रेट पुलिस अधीक्षक और उनके आला अधिकारियों को ये आगरा की मीटिंग में निर्देश दिया है कि वो इस बात का प्रचार प्रसार करें इस बात को उनके क्षेत्रों में जहां से वो विस्थापित हुए हैं या जहां चले गए हैं उन, उनके यहां इसका प्रचार प्रसार करें कि वो यदि वापस आना चाहते हैं और अपना वोट डालना चाहते हैं उनको पूर्ण सुरक्षा प्रदान की जाए Meanwhile, our correspondent Navikram Singh took stock of the overall poll preparations in Gautam Buddh Nagar district. The district will go to polls in the first phase of assembly elections. Let's take a look. UP is all set to witness its first phase of assembly election tomorrow. We are now in Gautam Buddh Nagar district. Final checks are being done by polling officer. As you can see, uh, let's talk to uh, some polling officers, sir. आप लोगों को चुनाव आयोग की तरफ से कुछ निर्देश दिए गए हैं क्या निर्देश दिए हमें समय से अपने पोलिंग स्टेशन अपने यहाँ पे जितनी भी स्टेशन मिली है ईवीएम मशीन मशीन वगैरह उसको चेक कर लें और समय से अपने पोलिंग बूथ पे पहुँचे अच्छा अपना नाम बता दीजिए मेरा नाम भागमल सिंह है आ, ये जानना चाहूँगा सर को जो, जो इस बार हम यहाँ देख रहे हैं इस बार नाम उनके फोटो और निशान तीनों चीजें शुक्रिया Uh, likely to set tone for remaining phases which would end on 8 march with camera person manoj kumar navikram singh rajya sabha tv gautam buddh nagar our prime minister narendra modi today promised small farmers in uttar pradesh that the bjp will waive off their loans if it is voted to par addressing an election rally in uttar pradesh's bijnor area modi criticized chief minister akhilesh yadav for the deteriorating law and order situation in the state ये छह मिले हैं जिनका किसानों को प्राइम मिनिस्टर नरेंद्र मोदी ऑन फ्राइडे एड्रेस्ड अ कैंपेन रैली इन बिजनौर टारगेटिंग द रूलिंग समाजवादी पार्टी पोल अलायंस विद द कांग्रेस इन उत्तर प्रदेश द प्राइम मिनिस्टर अर्स्ड पीपल टू रिजेक्ट द टू क्लैंस ही स्लैम द अखिलेश गवर्नमेंट सेइंग दैट पीपल ऑफ उत्तर प्रदेश डिड नॉट डिजर्व एन इन एफिशियंट स्टेट गवर्नमेंट दैट फेल टू वर्क फॉर देयर वेलबींग क्या उत्तर प्रदेश की सरकार का स्वयं का जो कानून व्यवस्था का रिपोर्ट है वो उस बात की गवाही नहीं है कि यहां आए दिन बहन बेटियों पर बलात्कार होते हैं इतना ही नहीं भाइयों बहनों समाजवादी पार्टी ये पार्टी नहीं है कुंडबा है कुंडबा एक परिवार का कुंडबा और ये ये दो पार्टियों का गठबंधन नहीं है एक गठबंधन दो कुंडों का है एक दिल्ली वाला कुंडबा और एक सफाई वाला कुंडबा प्रोमिसिंग अ लोन वेवर टू स्मॉल स्केल फार्मर्स मोदी सेड ही विल हेल्प डेथ हिट शुगर केन फार्मर्स इफ द बीजेपी केम टू पावर इन द स्टेट जो खोट छोटे छोटे किसान है भाजपा की सरकार बनते ही इन छोटे किसानों का कर्ज माफ कर दिया जाएगा मैं भी उत्तर प्रदेश का सांसद हूं सांसद के नाते मैं उत्तर प्रदेश की जनता को कहता हूं जो उत्तर प्रदेश में नई सरकार बनेगी भाजपा की सबसे पहला काम ये किसानों का मैं करवा के रहूंगा वो मैं आपको वादा करता हूं उत्तर प्रदेश गोज टू पोल इन सेवन फेजेस बिटवीन फेब्रुवरी इलेवेंथ एंड मार्च एथ The election is expected to be a three-cornered contest between the SP Congress combined, the BJP and the BSP. Bureau report, Rajya Sabha Television. While campaigning for the second phase of Uttar Pradesh elections, Chief Minister Akhilesh Yadav addressed a rally in Pilibhit today, recalling the past relationship between BSP and BJP. Akhilesh claimed that Mayawati could align with the Saffron Party again. targeting the bjp akhilesh said that the demonetization drive implemented by the government caused hardships to everyone and people were forced to stand in long queues for hours the samajwadi party leader also addressed an election rally in firozabad ek hi seat nahi mili aur humne nazari kare ki aage ka bahujan samaj party ki seatein zero kaise reh gayi aur ye bhi manna जब सच्चाई सामने आई तो बहुजन समाज पार्टी ने अपना पूरा वोट और कई जगह वोट भारतीय जनता पार्टी को ट्रांसफर करा दिया ये ना, ये चुनाव 
ہاں ہو سکتا ہے تجھے بھی کہہ دیں لیکن ان کے رشتے بڑھانے ہیں بھارتی دفتہ پانی سے تین بار بیٹر کے سرکار بھائی VSP Supremo Mayawati today asserted that her party will ensure complete law and order in the state if voted to power. Speaking at the rally in Majhola area of Muradabad, she promised to restart all welfare schemes stopped by the Samajwadi Party government. Dismissing the SP Congress alliance, VSP chief said that the Congress had formed an alliance with the anti-minority Samajwadi Party. In Uttar Pradesh, BJP has remained in the entire country छह वर्षों के शासनकाल में यहाँ विकास व जनहित व जन कल्याण के कार्यों की तरफ ध्यान न देकर केवल अपने आरएसएस के एजेंडे के मुताबिक ही चलकर यहाँ अधिकांश संप्रदायिक ताकतों को ही मजबूत किया है BJP President Amit Shah also addressed a rally in Uttar Pradesh's Etawa district attacking the ruling Samajwadi party. Shah said that the results will prove that the people of UP have accepted the BJP. He also urged the people to give the BJP a chance in the state. उत्तर प्रदेश की जनता ने सपा को भी मौके दिए बसपा को भी दिए चाचा को भी दिए भतीजे को भी दिए Prime Minister Narendra Modi also addressed an election rally in Haridwar ahead of the Uttarakhand Assembly election scheduled to take place on the 15th of February. Modi sought the complete restoration of Dev Bhumi and said that only the BJP can make this possible if it comes to power in the state. The Prime Minister also criticized the Harish Rawat government saying that uh, this land does not deserve a corrupt government. Modi also spoke about surgical strikes. He also slammed the opposition for politicizing the issue. Uttra khand mein bhajpa ki sarkar banegi. Ye loot chalane wale. Ye jangalon ko bechne wale. Main aap ko bhi swaad deta hoon. भाजपा की उत्तराखंड की नई सरकार एक एक का हिसाब पूरा करेगी कानून कानून का काम करके रहेगा कोई भी कितना बड़ा क्यों ना होगा उसको कानून के दायरे को स्वीकार करना पड़ेगा ये हमारी सरकार करके रहेगी at a time when the United Naga Council is waging an agitation against the creation of seven new districts in Manipur, many Naga villagers are struggling for roads and basic amenities in the areas where they live. Akhilesh Suman tells us more about their motivations in the upcoming assembly elections in the state. Makhail village of Manipur is located nearly 90 kilometers from state capital Imphal. This Naga Bastion of Senapati district is a place of religious importance for the community. Villagers want the place to be developed as a smart village. I want this village as a smart village. Uh, what I want to call this village as a smart, just because uh, this is a historical place and we believe that the Nagas starts uh, from this very place. Nagas claim this is the place of origin. It's only one shining example of harmony between the Naga, Mete and Asmi's communities of the Northeast. Focusing on development here would only help promote harmony in the insurgency prone state. These stones represent the departure of three brothers. And the three brothers are Asifra Lapa, the first brother. He is Mayang, so to say, the policeman of uh, Assam and elsewhere. Second is Tuto. He is the forefathers of Maite. And third, Kepio is the forefathers of the Nagas. So these three brothers had departed from this village. This is the uh, story that has been handed over to us from our parents, forefathers. With dusty and uneven roads, reaching the area become a bone jarring, bumpy ride. The Congress claims that lack of funds in the state is responsible for the bad infrastructure. Actually, this village has been neglected by the government in all sector. I would say 
the central government or the state government has not taken care of anything of this historical village. There is no black topping, no proper sanitation, no any government infrastructure. We have apprised government of India. Look, we did try our level best, but till today, we reach nowhere. So do something in this connection. As the highway is connecting, the two lifeline belongs to National Highway, means the center have something to say also. But villagers point out that the fund shortage hasn't prevented the party from investing money in other monuments of their choice. This is the, this is the indication of uh, for the forthcoming generation that Naga is want everywhere. So this is going to be the pillar of unity. Infrastructure is in a poor condition all over the state, including Imphal. But it's the worst in the Naga areas which only increases the sense of isolation of the community. Although the Congress has tried to keep the social balance in the Ibobe Singh Ministry by making a Naga leader Gai Khangam the Deputy Chief Minister, this election will be a test of whether social engineering alone will work in favor of the ruling Congress. Akhilesh Suman's report for Rajya Sabha Television. Well, it's time for a short break now, but news and updates will continue on the other side. Stay tuned. We'll be right back. I work primarily in the area of algorithms. We are interested in finding out whether such a program can be made for solving a particular problem and how efficient that would be and how much time the computer is going to take. Looking at all of those aspects of problem solving. Watch Eureka with Professor Naveen Garg, Department of Computer Science and Engineering, IIT Delhi, on Rajya Sabha Television. Welcome back, you're watching Rajya Sabha Television. Well, in a setback to Donald Trump's efforts to ban on visitors from seven mainly Muslim countries, U.S. Appeals Court has refused to reinstate the travel ban order. The Ninth U.S. Circuit Court of Appeals said it would not block a lower court ruling that halted the order. It said the government had not proved any terror threat that could justify the ban. It also rejected the argument that the president had sole discretion to set immigration policy. On the other hand, the two U.S. states that had challenged the travel ban said that the ban was unconstitutional and discriminated against Muslims. They convinced uh, the judges that the order would create further chaos. Meanwhile, Trump responded to the ruling with an angry tweet saying national security was at risk and there would be a legal challenge. He then gave an audio statement saying it was a political decision. It's a political decision and we're going to see them in court and I look forward to doing it. So you believe the judges made it We have a situation where the security of our country is at stake. And it's a very, very serious situation. So we look forward, as I just said, to seeing them in court. Well, in what is being viewed as a cordial phone call between the U.S. and China, U.S. President Donald Trump agreed to honor and continue with the One China policy during his conversation with Chinese President Xi Jinping. The One China policy is the diplomatic acknowledgement that there is only one Chinese government. Trump had angered Beijing in December by talking to the president of Taiwan and saying the U.S. did not have to stick to the policy. The telephonic conversation was the first between the two leaders since Trump took office on the 20th of January. China's foreign ministry reacted positively to the conversation and appreciated Trump's backing of the One China policy. One 那么奉行一个中国政策，遵守中美三个联合公报的原则，这是美国政府应尽的义务，也是中方的一贯立场。特朗普总统在通话中表示：“Here's a roundup of the other international news and global buzz. The Turkish military hit 11 Islamic State targets and killed 23 militants in the strategic town of Al Bab." in northern Syria as part of its ongoing incursion. A footage released by the army showed buildings said to be used by Islamic State militants being bombed. 
Al-Bab is a major economic hub for the militants and lies on a key crossroads for the region north of Aleppo. Violent scuffles erupted in South Africa's parliament as members of the economic freedom fighters were forcibly removed after President Jacob Zuma was interrupted during a speech. The leader of the EFF, Julius Malema, shouted at Zuma as he attempted to deliver his State of the Nation annual address. Amid the turmoil, the main opposition Democratic Alliance party also walked out of parliament, saying Zuma was unqualified to hold office and questioning the deployment of soldiers in parliament. According to a UN report, the ISIS continues to recruit from the restive Afpak border region. The terror outfit is reportedly struggling financially in Afghanistan and has restored to, resorted to extortion. The report also noted that ISIS has around 2,000 to 3,500 fighters overall in Afghanistan, but has lost a considerable amount of territory in eastern Afghanistan. A U.S. Navy P-3 plane and a Chinese military aircraft came close to each other over the South China Sea. The aircraft reportedly came within 1,000 feet of each other earlier this week in the vicinity of the Scarborough Shoal between Philippines and the Chinese mainland. These incidents involving Chinese and American aircraft are infrequent with only two having taken place in 2016. And some sports news now where Virat Kohli created history by becoming the first batsman to score double centuries in four successive test series, surpassing legendary Sir Donald Bradman and Rahul Dravid. The Indian captain hit 204 runs in the first innings on day two of the Hyderabad test against Bangladesh as the hosts declared on a mammoth total of 687 for six. During his innings, Kohli also registered the most test runs in a home season, breaking Virendra Sehwag's previous record of 1,105 runs in 17 innings. Wicketkeeper Riddhiman Saha also scored a ton, becoming the third centurion of the innings after Mundi Vijay and Kohli. In reply, Bangladesh were 41 for the loss of one wicket at stumps as India struck early with a new ball by Rumi, opener Soumya Sarkar. Well, here's a roundup of the other sports news in Sports Beat. India entered the final of the blind T20 World Cup cricket tournament by defeating Sri Lanka by 10 wickets in the first semi final in Bengaluru. The defending champions chased down Lanka's total of 174 in just 13 overs without any loss of wicket. India will take on the winner of tomorrow's semis between Pakistan and England. The official mascot of the FIFA Under-17 World Cup was unveiled in New Delhi today. A clouded leopard named Kelio was uh, introduced to hundreds of football fans in a ceremony attended by Sports Minister Vijay Goel and All India Football Federation President Rafal Patel. India is hosting its first ever FIFA tournament which will be played from October 6 to 28 this year. Russia's 800 meters London Olympics gold medalist Maria Savionova Farsonova was uh, stripped of her medal for doping. The Court of Arbitration for Sport also imposed a four year ban, saying there was clear evidence she used performance enhancing drugs. The four year penalty is re retroactive to August 24, 2015. Well, that's it on this newscast. Good night.